This is my Harbor Freight five drawer tool cart. Uh, I just assembled it and I wanted to give you a quick rundown of it. Uh, here's a quick look at it. On this side we have the handle and a storage area and a paper towel holder. This is actually magnetic. It was just another six dollars. Um, you attach it to it. Very strong rear earth magnets uh, for easy access to paper towels. Now uh, we'll go through this uh, tool cart and I know at this point uh, some of the people are going to say you know it's not smart. Let me just set this up. You should this is the uh, the wood top version of the tool cart. Uh, it's something you should uh, ask for at uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, we'll get into that. But uh, uh, one, one of the things I hear that uh, I see on other people's postings is that whenever you uh, put up a review of this of this tool cart, you always have people saying, you know, you should get the get a snap on, get another brand. Uh, this, it's a piece of junk, it's not good as the other ones, and the truth is, it isn't. It's not as good as a snap-on, uh, but does that really surprise you? I mean, uh, a snap-on tool chest costs, I think, about six, seven, eight hundred dollars It's more solid, the metal is a lot more solid, uh, but, you know, and the truth is, a tool cart that costs six, seven hundred dollars should be solid. Uh, but the real, uh, the amazing thing about this is that they're giving you a very solid tool cart for $159. This was $159 uh, at Harbor Freight. Again, you, you really shouldn't even walk into Harbor Freight unless you have those coupons because they're so easy to get. Just Google them, Harbor Freight Tools coupons, look on their website, sign up for their emails, get the... Uh, uh, they'll send you in the mail a bunch of uh, coupons and other uh, uh, specials. Sign up for everything and go there when you get those coupons. And those coupons are usually available on the internet. Either codes you can just uh, give them or uh, printing out coupons themselves. And uh, uh, we'll go through that. But the point is that there, you know, there are times when you want to spend a lot of money on, on good tools. And there are times when okay is good enough. And, and for me... You know, look, if you have this in a shop, in a, in a uh, garage, and you want to show off your quality, you know, you're, let's say you're saying that your services are the best uh, quality services, your repair services are the best, and it's difficult to measure quality, I guess, from a customer's perspective. So you might want to have snap-on stuff, good, really high-quality uh, tools, so that your customers feel that, look, this is, you know, a, a good mechanic, he only uses the best, it's worth paying him a premium. But for myself, in my house, I really don't care. I'm just looking for something that works, uh, something that's cost effective. And uh, it's really, it, it, it cost me $159. That's what the coupon was uh, that they mailed me. And, um, and we'll go through it. Uh, I just wanted to point that, you know, like in general, you know, to give you a sense of my tools. There are tools I have that are better, and there are tools that I have that aren't as good. And uh, just to show you quickly, um, the tools that I care about, that I use more, are, for instance, this. I have uh, here from Bosch a hammer drill. This I spent about $100. I, I, I probably would not buy it from Harbor Freight. I don't know what Harbor Freight sells for. Probably about 40 Really nice hammer drill. It's great. It's great for hooking up generators into the concrete. You can just punch right through the uh, concrete and uh, put the anchors in. So that I would buy a Bosch for. Actually, it only cost me about $100. Um, another tool that I spend money on is this, uh, this Milwaukee. It's a reciprocating saw. Heavy duty. It says Orbital Super Sawzall. I think it, ha it reduces the uh, pushback. I mean, for that, it's worth spending money. I, I cut a lot of wood. People give me a lot of wood. People in the neighborhood, they give it to me for firewood. If I can't use it for something, I just use it as firewood. And uh, something I also used a little bit for this project, which 
I would spend money on because I really enjoy are the uh, the uh, cordless drills. I have this cordless cordless drill. I got this recently. It's a Dewalt. It's the XR lithium ion. It's brushless. This is great. Oh, look how that comes out. It's great. It uh, very powerful. This is a tool I use a lot, and uh, it's worth spending money on it. But if you're not uh, going to use a tool a lot and you only need it occasionally, then tools that are okay, uh, you know, serve the purpose. I mean, good tools help you uh, do a better job. But something like a tool cart, you don't necessarily need the best. Uh, so I was introduced to Harbor Freight very recently. I hadn't known about it, and someone told me, "Yeah, what are you crazy about? You didn't know about it." So I went here and. Um, and I picked up a bunch of stuff which I'll show you, one of which was this tool cart. Um, but just one other tool I wanted to show you actually, which is really good, is uh, I have is this. Um, I've used, for this project you need a, a drill. I'd recommend you use the cordless or for more difficult jobs I needed this. Actually this, uh, believe it or not, is a, it's a Craftsman drill. It's a 3 8 inch drill. It says, let me make sure you can see it. It says on it, uh, zero to 1200 rpm my friends call it a relic but uh, i have to say it's very powerful i bought this when i was uh it's about 30 years old i bought it when i was about 14. um i had to beg my parents to buy this for me uh they uh we were in sears and they said we don't you don't need it what do you want it for and i said you know you have me hanging up pictures uh, doing repairs. I'm drilling. I'm trying to make holes in the wall with a hammer and a screwdriver. That doesn't work. And they really didn't understand. But finally, after uh, fighting with them enough, they agreed. They got me the drill. And and you can't kill this drill. I mean, I've been. I've gone through concrete, metal, wood. I've abused it, banged it around. It lasts forever. I mean, it's. It's amazing, and I've even I've oiled it recently, and with the new drill bits, I think the drill bits are better than ever. Uh, it actually works better than ever. So for cutting through some of the metal, um, there's nothing like this. You really can't do it with a cordless drill. Uh, and that and that's that's what I used for this project. Um, so I'll show you this, but I also did want to show you a couple of other things that I picked up at Harbor Freight because this is a video a little bit about Harbor Freight. Um, like I said, the stuff is very reasonably priced, and it's okay. It's not the best. If you if you want the best, go out and buy the best. But for a lot of things, you don't really need the best. Um, they give you these freebies, all these freebies. Like you get this. If you buy one thing, you get this for free. It's a light. You, you light it up that way or this, this way. It's excellent. I mean, it works great. I also got, um, I got this. I'm not in bolt assortment. I think it was $8. 240 knots and bolts. I mean, the worst thing is to have a project and then not to have another bolt to finish it up. It, 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 it's very frustrating. I got the hose clamps. I don't know. Really, I think it was like 4 or $5. It's worth having. A 96-piece stainless steel screw and nut assortment. It's good to have. Another couple of bucks. Uh, they also give you, uh, I got this for free, another freebie, tool chest, toolbox for like two or three bucks. I don't know. Um, and um, I'll show you some more tools that I actually used for this project as I go through it with you. But, um, so it, it, it's a pretty good tool cart. And but it does have certain limitations, and, and I will tell you. Um, first of all, like I said, it's, it was one hundred and fifty nine dollars. Um, and while you know it's, you would expect, for instance, like Snap On to have a great cart for six six seven hundred dollars. To have a decent cart for one hundred and fifty nine dollars is to me more impressive. That's more difficult. If you think about it, if you're getting a cart for one hundred and fifty nine dollars that weighs about 100 it weighs 150 pounds so you're paying basically about a dollar a pound for a finished product um, I, I think that's amazing I mean um, you're if you think about it 
this item, probably the raw materials, the hundred the hundred and fifty pounds of steel to make this, I, my guess is, my estimate is, it probably would cost them about fifty fifty dollars and just in raw materials and the paint. Um, then to uh, to manufacture it and to pay the Chinese man, uh, manufacturer uh, a profit margin probably costs another fifty dollars for the for the cost of the equipment, the machine tools to make this, the uh, the employees. So they're up to about a hundred dollars. And then I would say between insurance and transportation, probably that cost the, and and rent for their stores probably another thirty forty dollars a unit. I mean, so they're making what ten fifteen twenty dollars a unit. I mean, the, the, their profit margin is basically at about, I would say, a 10 to 20 percent profit margin, which is very low. I mean, con considering the difficulties of many, all, all the risks involved for a manufacturer, this is, it's really quite impressive. They're taking maybe a 10, 15 percent profit margin, and they're getting you something from China uh, at a very low cost. I mean, I think that's, uh, that's capitalism at its best. I mean, you have somebody you know, shopping the globe to get you this product at the lowest possible price. That itself was impressive. Um, and uh, let me go through it with you. Uh, one of the things, I just, oh, I just wanted to show you this as well, not to mix things up. I also got this, uh, which is good to sit on while you're working on the project. There's like another $20. A nice little bench. You lock it in. Okay, so put that over here. Now, um, basically, I was overall very impressed with it. It's very solid, very substantial. It's, this you can move, this you really can't. The side beams, the corner beams are very, are very strong. Um, I will tell you though, I did have some issues with it. Uh, and I'll show you, first of all, this corner, the fit and finish of it is, uh, there are some questions about it. It really didn't fit properly in the corner. I had to bend the top. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I'll show you. I had to bend this area over here uh, to fit this in. To bend this over here so it wouldn't bang on here. Um, I also put in some insulation on the top so that uh, when I slammed the top down, it wouldn't you wouldn't hear the metal on metal. Uh, also, if you look closely, let me get that little light. Uh, over here, it's a little crooked over here. Something about that is not right. It's this metal. It comes down lower there. The drawers aren't 100% aligned. They're okay. I mean, it's fine. But it's just not perfect. And, uh, okay, by the way, let me just set this up again. Um, let me just show you, the, give a quick look around. It has five drawers. And, uh, by the way, first of all, I was joking about the top. Uh, the top uh, is something you have to make yourself. And I'll show you how to do it. The wood top, uh, it's not available at Harbor Freight. It's just the, uh, it just comes like this. Just the metal. Uh, but I'll show you how to do that. So here it is, and let me show you two things I did. First of all, uh, I I put on this wood top, and the wood top uh, is something that had to be cut. I'm not an expert at cutting, uh, so uh, I, I, I had, I'm not an expert where I can measure it out and then uh, draw it out on a, a piece of wood and cut it. So what I did was this. Let me just put this down. I basically what I did was I found that I, I've had much more success cutting things when I just make a template of it. So what I did is I laid it across here and I laid it flush with this side, the front side and the right side so I wouldn't have to cut those areas. This way it would have a neater look. And then for the back, I went around with a pencil and I, and I pulled a pencil across both sides. And then that's how I knew where to cut it. And then I'll show you what I used. Ah, 
hold on. I use this clamp. The Harbor Freight has tons of these, these and other clamps that cost just a couple of bucks each. And to cut it, I'm a little admittedly fearful of those big saws. I just can't afford to hurt myself. So I got this. I know professionals will call this a toy, but it's this Rockwell VersaCut. And basically, it's dusty, but it's safer because the blade is fully uh, covered. And the only way for the blade to come out is when you pull this down, the safety, and you push it to start, then it comes out. And you can adjust it. It can't cut two by fours. For that, I have a chop saw, which I use. Um, I'm comfortable with that. Though so sometimes I'm, I'm so nervous with that that when I cut the wood, I don't hold it down and the wood hits me in the head. But in any event, that, that I'm comfortable with that for two by fours. But with this, to cut plywood, um, I use this. And it has a laser. I don't know if you could see it. Let me shut off the light. Well, at least one of the lights. It has this laser that points to exactly where uh, you want it. You want to cut it. So what that does is uh, you you mark it with a pencil where you want the cut, and then with this you you align the laser with the pencil marks, and you can get a really nice cut right exactly where you need it. So that, that's one thing I used. And when I do my cuttings, I have a pretty good, I'll show you over here. I have this, uh, this uh, workbench. It's a Black & Decker. It's the Workmate 225. So you put the wood across with a bunch of clamps, and you cut it with the... Uh, I cut it with the Rockwell. It's a little bit underpowered, and sometimes I, I wish I had a full uh, a full circular saw, not a mini circular saw. But I feel more comfortable with this. You're much less likely to injure yourself with it. Okay, so what? Let me put this back up here, and what I did is I cut after I cut it. It's pretty good. It's this. It's it's plywood. I think it's about 40 years old. If you can see, I've never really seen plywood like this. There's like pieces. Yeah, let me see. Hold on. There are pieces of wood that go across, and then you have this veneer on top. So there's like actual pieces of boards across. It's not perfectly flat either. Uh, I think it was used as shelving, so it's a little warped. Uh, very slightly and then I put on these clamps which are not attached to it it's attached to the wood it just fits over I had to drill holes with the corded drill drilled holes and this holds it and let me put this down and I'll show you even when you lift it up it uh, it holds up the wood holds up the wood's still up there, and that's what it is. Uh, I'll show you my tools, but first I also wanted to show you another thing I did. Uh, I really didn't like the locking mechanism because it has this locking mechanism where, when you, when whenever it's closed, you can't open the drawers. And maybe that's okay if you want security and you don't want someone to steal your tools. Um, this way, the benefit of that is when you lock it, when you turn the key, you can't open this. And whenever you can't open this, you can't open this, any of the drawers. And so it remains locked. I didn't like that. I wanted to be able to open the drawers all the time without having it, without having to open up the top, especially because I have this piece of wood on top. Um, so uh, what I did was this. Now, there's two things you could do. Uh, one is, let me show you how this works. If you remove a drawer, on the back of the drawer, let me see if you can see, there's this little lat, uh, hook. See that? I don't know if you can see. There's this hook there. And the latch comes down when you close the, the top, and it locks in there so you can't pull out the drawer. So one thing you could do is you could cut it off. Just cut it off. And then if you go through each drawer, there are five drawers, you cut, you take them out, 
and you cut it off. And then the drawers will open and you don't have to uh, you don't have to worry about the locking me mechanism. You'll be able to open it up at any time. And that's what originally what I was thinking about doing. And so when I was at Harbor Freight, I got this. I got this cutting tool. This Harbor Freight cutoff tool, three inch high speed cutoff tool. Now, I had a coupon for this. It was, this was um, $19, which is also amazing because it's a motor, so there's got to be copper in here. I would say the cost of materials is probably seven, eight dollars. Maybe the manufacturing costs another five dollars, six dollars. What are they making on this? A couple of bucks? It's amazing. This bag was another dollar ninety nine. All right, but uh, I found that it was difficult when I started cutting. It uh, gave off a lot of sparks, and uh, I thought it was going to set my house on fire. So. In any event, I, I kind of didn't use that. So this is what I did. Um, I removed the back, the whole locking mechanism, and I'll tell you how I did it. So if you decide to do it, uh, you can do it. Uh, but you should take a look at it here. You might find this is ugly. You don't like what I did, and then just don't do it. So here's what you want to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to remove, you want to pull out all the drawers before you remove the locking mechanism. Uh, and the reason is you won't be able to if the locking mechanism is, uh, if, if the hooks are all the way in, if the drawers pushed all the way back. So you, you take, you loosen them all out and then you drill out, there are four screws. This is what it, four, they're, um, rivets. There's a couple of pieces. You got this piece, the cover, and then here is another piece that goes like that. And it has a spring. Yeah, I'll show you this one. It has a spring, and I'll show you how it works. But basically, there's this cover here, and the spring and other pieces in there. And you want to drill out the rivets, but you don't want to drill it out from the inside out, because if you do, it's much more difficult. I found it was a lot easier to go from the other side, the back side, in. Just go on the back, drill out those rivets. There's six on each side. It's four plus two for the mechanism. Four for the cover, two for the mechanism. And then you you just you drill it from the outside. You drill off like the heads, and then you can just pull it out with the pliers. Um, and once you do that, you take, this comes off. You got this piece, and then there's this long piece over here. This is actually the piece that the hooks go in, the hooks on the shelves go into. They go in there and then when you close it, you know, when you close it, it latches down on, on the hooks of the drawer. So you got to pull this out. And the way to pull this out is um, you have to remove the bolts on the struts. You just need a ratchet on the left, like for instance, the ratchet on the, on the, right, on the right side. The, the side closest to the outer wall, you put a ratchet on there, and then the bolt on the other on the inside part, you have to use just use a wrench just to hold it. You, you loosen the bolts, you remove, you just take the strut up. You need this in a you need the top to be in a vertical position so that you can remove these pieces from the back. And the benefit is, you get to clear it up. You get more space. You don't have those ugly shields in the back. You don't have to deal with this. Um, and that's better, but you might feel that this is ugly, that now you have holes in here, six holes, this part is not painted. I can understand that, I don't, I don't disagree with that, you might not like it, but I'm fine with it, it really doesn't bother me, and, uh, you know, at least you can, now I can open it up with, with or without the top being open. Like I said, for me, security is not an issue. Now, other things I picked up uh, at Harbor Freight for this that are helpful is I got this, this non-slip drawer liner, 18 inch by 72 inches. It kind of fills up. It doesn't really go all the way on here. It's okay. Like a lot of things at Harbor Freight, it's okay. It's not the greatest. It's, there's not enough rubber in here. It's like a mesh. Can you see that? It looks good, but there's not enough rubber. It doesn't, it won't stick. It doesn't really stick to things. You rub it against metal. It, doesn't stick the way rubber should. 
it doesn't really it feels like a like a plastic or recycled something and it doesn't really stick to the wood so whatever you you know your tools really it, it kind of moves it slides along a little bit sometimes I mean it's okay but it's not great uh, I'll show you over here here's how I have my setup uh, I have my original uh, craftsman wrenches from when I was younger they're about this sets about 25 years old and I'll tell you about that I bought that after I got uh, when I got my first car and I needed to repair it uh, so I waited and waited until craftsman had this sale I really like these wrenches with the, with the uh, switch and I waited for about a year until they finally had a sale for like for $99 you got like a hundred piece set and uh, with these wrenches uh, and I was I've been very happy with them I've used them for about 25 years and they're great it had all this it had this uh, I did buy at Harbor Freight I got these wrenches it's a set two sets of seven I got the SAE and the metric uh, and I'll show you just to give you uh, I also bought these holders you can you can screw them on here for instance this one you can screw it on a wall and it holds your wrenches it's okay you know it's not the greatest but I think I think it cost about seven dollars maybe it was I think it was five dollars but in that in that range and I'll show you um, so I gotten they had a, a coupon also for this for the wrenches a set of seven SAE or um, the uh, metric and uh, basically it's a it's a ratcheting wrench and they had seven for sixteen ninety nine, so I thought that was a really good deal. So uh, they seem good. They have this very shiny Pittsburgh Pro. I don't think this ever had anything to do with Pittsburgh. It certainly wasn't made in Pittsburgh. They have these great names, Harbor Freight. Everything is very American. You got this, the parts, the U.S. General. It's Pittsburgh Pro. It's Chicago Electric. Believe me, those tools weren't made in Chicago. And and. Uh, they didn't even stop by in Chicago. Okay. So I have that. The other thing I got from Harbor Freight, which actually I thought was very good. Uh, also, I used um, Loctite for the screws to hold them in. The Harbor Freight was $2.99. So they, it's recommended. And I got this, this the socket tray organizer. Which I think is pretty good. I uh, I'll show you. I have some in here. It just makes it very easy. You could see the sizes. You could grab them easily. Makes life a lot easier. Yeah, you still have the latches here. So even though there's no lock. Uh, you can you have to latch it so you don't have to worry about it tipping over and the shelves starting to fall out. This was my original set that I had gotten. Uh, all this came in one set for ninety nine dollars back twenty five years ago. But now it's easy. You can see the metric. It's these are actually very good. I really recommend these uh, these holders, the ratchet holders. Uh, I will tell you that another criticism I have is the the material for the shelves, and I'll put this down so I can show you. The material is very cheap. Uh, I, I don't know what it's made of. It's like a cross between paper and it's some kind of recy probably recycled something or other. It's pretty junky, and they use it as, as shipping materials as well because it's it kind of when they ship it the. the toolbox part and the and the bottom part uh, one's on top of the other with these things in between which are meant to line your shelves and within shipping it gets ripped it gets ripped and beaten up so uh, that was one other minor issue I had um, and that's why I got the uh, the replacement liner I will say though that it's actually you know overall it's very well built I mean it's the metal is very solid. Each wheel weighed about four or five pounds, as far as I could tell. And uh, very solid overall. I mean, for $159, you really can't beat it. And I think that with this wood top, it makes it even more usable. 
uh, because uh, you could work on it. Now it's a worktop. I mean, I wouldn't bang on it, but you could put to toys together for your kids. Uh, you know, it's very stable. It's not going to fall off. You know, you, you know, and it, it's really not difficult to cut this. The whole thing probably took like an hour or two. Um, I will. I, I am thinking though of uh, varnishing this and uh, polyurethaneing it, just to maybe give it a little shine and make it a little more durable. Uh, that's probably my next project that I'm going to do. But this is very solid. I mean, it's not going to break. I mean. You know, I'll tell you, even if you have a garage and uh, you have better toolboxes, there's nothing wrong with having one of these just to kick around. You know, for $159, you have the new guy drag this around. He's going to beat up everything anyway. He's going to beat up all your toolboxes. So you give him this one, and uh, if he kills this one, at least uh, he's not killing a $600 toolbox. He's just going to bang up a uh, $159 one. I mean, you could buy three of these for the cost of a, a snap-on and you have to consider that when you're considering what to buy um, but uh, overall I, I highly recommend it um, you know and like I said overall the Harbor Freight stuff it's okay it's not it's not excellent but it's okay and sometimes you just need okay um, I'll just give you a quick view of my other tools anything else I got from Harbor Freight um, there's just one other thing I got is those toolboxes. These are really good. Um, as you can see, space is really a priority here. Very limited. I have uh, some other tools here. I got my screwdrivers in the wood. I, I just drilled them, drilled holes in the wood. And uh, here's a great wire stripper. But just for my tools, I, I built over. I, I put up over here from Harbor Freight this magnetic strip that I wanted to show you and it's an 18 inch magnetic strip uh, I think it was eight dollars and you could just grab your tools like this this is pretty heavy this is an Irwin uh, it's like a wire cutter and all you do is you take this and you put it there and you could just grab your tools it makes it very easy to just grab your tools put it back very handy you know, and they, that's the other thing. They have a lot of tools that are just very handy and very useful. So that's my summary. I don't think you should buy important tools, tools that are important to you, at Harbor Freight. Um, but I think if you, if if the choice, especially if the choice is, look, if if you can choose between the six hundred dollar one and one hundred fifty nine dollar one, it doesn't matter to you. Choose the the six hundred dollar one. But if the choice, maybe the choice is. A uh, hundred fifty nine dollar tool card or no tool card at all, and so I think that if you get this tool card, you'll be happy. It's uh, it's really it's good quality, and like I said, whenever you go to Harbor Freight, you have to go make sure you go with the coupons, the coupon codes. It's really like a negotiation. You know, you go there, you pick up all the stuff. Everything's eight dollars maybe, and and you end up with like a hundred and fifty dollar bill. The cashier says, "Look, it's a hundred and fifty dollars," and you say, "No, I got this code. I got this code. I have uh, um, this coupon. You got to scan this in." And uh, you know, by the time I was done, I was like, "I, I think uh, uh, my calculations. You owe me ten bucks." But uh, you certainly want to get those codes so that you can uh, get the best value from Harbor Freight. And uh, don't be afraid to uh, shop there. The stuff's pretty good. And sometimes okay is good enough. Okay, any comments? You just post it. Thanks.